Rocky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Doc. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, in exactly one half hour, Jack Benny will do his television show. But right now, let's go back to yesterday and look in on Jack as he's having breakfast at home. Would you like another waffle, boss? No, thanks, Rochester. I've had enough. You might as well go on with your work. But, boss, so far this morning, I made the beds, cleaned the rugs, washed the floors, polished the furniture, scrubbed the linoleum, washed the windows, trimmed the hedge, and mowed the lawn. Say, you have done a lot of work. Yeah, considering this is my day off. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, Rochester, I'll wash the dishes. You don't have to wash the dishes, boss. Didn't you notice I used paper plates? Oh, yes, I meant to ask you. Why do you use paper plates today? Because this is National Save a Wife Week. Well, what does is, what is Save a Wife Week got to do with you and me? Boss, my contract reads till death do us part, so I fall in that category. <laughs> Oh, stop exaggerating. Who's exaggerating? When I first came to work here, I carried the vacuum cleaner over the threshold. Well, can I help it if you're sentimental? Anyway, don't make such a big... Rochester, what are you doing? Scraping the butter off your plate. Now, don't be silly. I hardly touched that butter. Put it back in the refrigerator. Okay. And that jam on the plate, that's enough for another meal. But, Bob... And that slice of bread, that can be toasted. But can I throw something away? Why? We've had that garbage disposal for two years, and we don't even know if it works. <laughs> well, if you're so curious, buy something and throw it in. <laughs> now, come on, help me set the chairs up in the living room. I invited my cast over to watch the World Series game today on TV. I'll get the door. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. You know, Jack, as I was coming up the walk, I noticed that the fence the Coleman's put up between your house and theirs looks a lot better now. Yes, the ivy has almost covered the barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing it would grow with all that electricity. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, Mary, I haven't seen Ronnie and Benita Coleman in a long time. Oh, I have, Jack. As a matter of fact, I was at a party at their house last night. The Coleman's gave a party? Gee, they live right next door. Had I known it, I'd have dropped over. Well, Jack, it was the most unusual party. Mm -hmm. The lights were out, the shades were drawn, and everybody had a whisper. <laughs> oh, well, Ronnie and Benita probably didn't want to disturb the people who live on the other side of them. Uh, they were at the party. <laughs> understand them not inviting me. Well, don't feel bad about it, Jack, because everybody who came to the party asked about you. They did? They asked about mm -hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Before they took off their hats and coats, they said, is Jack Benny here? <laughs> oh, well, that was nice. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Rochester. The rest of my gang will be here soon. You better get some refreshments ready. Yes, sir. Are you going to push the hot dogs or the penis today? <laughs> You're not going to push anything. <laughs> They'll look, they'll see. If they like, they'll buy. <laughs> Just have an attractive display. Okay. Mary, as soon as everybody gets here... Come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hi, kid. You want to make a bet on the World Series? A bet? Put up or shut up. <laughs> Look, Dennis, I didn't even get a chance. Come on, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Dennis, I'm trying to tell you I didn't get oh, a... Oh, Jack, don't get yourself so excited. But he hasn't given... Look, Dennis, just let's relax, watch the game, and enjoy ourselves. Don't try to talk me out of it. This is one series I've got to make a bet on. Well, all right, all right, you insist. Who do you want in the series? Who's playing? <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Uh, Jack. Mary. Hey, Mary, watch this. I'm going to teach this kid a lesson once and for all. Now, Dennis, since you seem to feel you have to make a bet on the series, 
All right, put up $5 and let Mary hold it. Okay. Here, Mary, here's my $5. Here's mine, Mary. Now, Dennis... Listen to this, Mary. Now, Dennis, the two teams that are playing in this World Series are the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Milwaukee Braves. The Pirates and the Braves? Yes. Now, which one do you want? The Yankees. <laughs> Dennis, you led me to believe you don't know nothing about baseball. Now, when we made the bet, why did you pick the Yankees? I wanted to teach you a lesson once and for all. <laughs> well, a bet is off. Now, let me hear the song you're going to do on the show, and that's all. Okay. What a sore loser. Just sing. <laughs> Dennis, very good. That'll be fine on the show. Well, thanks, Mr. Benny. I hope you're not mad at me because I wanted to make a bet with you. No, I'm not mad. You see, I need some extra money because I want to buy my mother a birthday present. Oh, when's her birthday? Wednesday. She's having a big party. She's going to have an orchestra and dancing and singing and cake and ice cream and everything. Hey, that sounds like fun. Where's it going to be? I don't know. I'm not invited. <laughs> you know, Dennis... I don't blame your mother, and it serves you right. You're such a silly kid that nobody wants you around. That's why they don't ask you anywhere. I was at Ronald Coleman's party. <laughs> Dennis, you were invited to the Coleman's house? Is that right, Mary? Oh, yes, Jack. They even asked her to sing the theme song of the party. The party had a theme song? What was it? Whispering. <laughs> Look, I don't want to hear any more about that whispering party at Coleman. Now, the kids, the game should be starting soon, so let's go into... Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Bob, where are you? I thought you were coming over today. Well, I was, Jack, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to stick around the house. You know, my brother Bing just got in from Elko, and he's staying with us. Well, he's brother Bing. That's a good thing you got a guest room. Oh, you're not kidding See, my wife and my kids and I, we moved into it, and Bing's got the rest of the house. <laughs> well, gee, doesn't that make things a little cramped? Yeah, but you know Bing, he never complains. <laughs> well, I know. Well, give him my regards, will you? I will. Must be nice having your brother around. Well, it is, but, gee, you have to do such strange things to make him happy. What strange things? Well, have you ever taken a bath in Minute Maid orange juice? <laughs> No, I used to take a lot of baths in Jell-O. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you can't come over, Bob. Well, gee, so am I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. By the way, Jack. Yes? I meant to tell you, I went over to Centigrill the other night, 
To see Frankie Remley in is makes you want to sit this damn child perfectly. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> Remley's orchestra, huh? Say, Bob, I'd like to ask you something. Since you lead an orchestra, too, I want your honest opinion. How do you think Frankie looks standing in front of the band? Oh, he looks wonderful, Jack. Huh? He was playing the guitar and he had a big smile on his face. He, the only thing is that he might have been nervous or something, but, well, I thought his manner was just a little too formal. You mean he was stiff? That, too. <laughs> no! Well, Bob, the next time... <laughs> the next time you go down to the synagogue, call me and I'll go with you. I want Frankie to see me there. Well, then we better go early. Why? Well, after 9.30, everybody looks alike to him. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, Bob, i got to hang up. There's somebody at the door. Okay, so long. Goodbye. I'll get it, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Well, hello, Mary. Thought I'd be the first one here. No, Dennis and I are both here. Oh. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hi, Dennis. Put up or shut up. <laughs> Dennis, please. Don, do me a favor. Will you sit down? Where? On Dennis. <laughs> Uh, let's go in the den and turn on the television set. It's almost time for the game. Okay. Oh, look, there's no rush. We've got nearly an hour before the game starts. No, Don. I've got five minutes to ten. Oh, that's funny. I've got a quarter after nine. Don, let me see your watch. Oh, for heaven's sake. How can a man of your dignity go around wearing a Mickey Mouse wristwatch? <laughs> you gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was a mistake. I meant to give it to Sammy the drummer. <laughs> he can't tell time, and I thought he'd enjoy the picture. <laughs> well, kids, it's about time, so let's go in the other room and... Oh, now, who can that be? I get it. Hello, Jack. Leo! Leo DeRosa! Well, Leo DeRosa, this is really a surprise. Well, Jack, I happened to be passing by, so I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Well, that's wonderful. Most of the gang is here, and we were just going to watch the game. Game? What game? <laughs> what game? The World Series. The World Series? The season's over. Why did I have to squeeze in another few games? <laughs> Wait a minute, Leo. I know how you feel, but you can't win the pennant every year. Don't tell me you're sore. Oh, on the contrary, Jack. I've been in organized baseball 20 years, and I consider this has been my most successful season. Why? I was only fined $1,000. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Hey, hey, come on, Jack. We missed the game. Okay, but look who's here, gang. Leo DeRosha. Leo, you know my cast. Oh, sure. Hello, Mary. Hello, Leo. Good to see you. Hello, Don. Hi, Leo. Hello, Dennis. Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Cut that out! <laughs> hey, kids, aren't we lucky Leo dropped in? Now we can watch the game with an expert. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. Oh, don't be so modest, Leo. There isn't a thing you don't know about the game. Mary's right, Leo. Why, well, I consider you the finest manager in baseball. If he's so great, what's he doing here today? <laughs> Damn it. But Leo, don't... <laughs> Leo, don't, don't pay any attention to him. He's always this way. Put up or shut up. <laughs> Leo, uh, please, don't pay any attention. He's always like uh, that. For a minute, I thought he was being once too often. <laughs> well, he certainly acts like it. Oh, say, Leo, I hate to bring up a touchy subject, but what happened to the Giants this year? Mm -hmm. Well, Don, actually, we planned the same strategy we used two years ago. We figured to start slow and let the other teams get overconfident. Then along about July, we'd slowly begin to pick up steam, and in the home stretch, we'd pull up fast, and as the season ended, we'd have them in the bag. In the bag? Now, right now, my boys are selling peanuts at Ebbets Field. <laughs> oh, very good, Leo. Very good. Boss, I've got this television set on. The game's about to begin. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's go in the den. 
Hey, is the game starting? Pretty soon, boss. The four umpires just came on the field. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't they take their places? They're just standing there. Jack, I think they're going to sing. Umpires singing? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Nobody loves an umpire. Nobody seems to care. Our hearts may be breaking, some insults we're taking, but nobody seems to care. Nobody loves an umpire. He gets a nice stare. You greet our decisions with booze and derision, but nobody seems to care. We may be homely, but that's not the reason we're lonely. Although you may doubt us, you can't play without us, so why don't you treat us fair? When you are sitting up in the stand, hopping the lucky and feeling grand, consider the men who get all the luck, are we chumps to be humps? The tears and the booze never bother me, cause I know how happy I'm gonna be. For I'll soon be home in my easy chair, enjoying a lucky style. Everyone loves a lucky, just like one and you'll agree. That luckies are made of that fine like tobacco, yes, LSSMFT. Luckies are better tasting. They're cleaner and fresher, too. Just tear and compare and declare everywhere that it's time to try. A lucky the smoke you will last. You know, that, that's the strangest thing I've ever seen. I've never heard of umpires singing. Have you, Leo? None of them ever sang to me. <laughs> Fellas, the game's going to start. Yes, sir, here we go. Hey, this is as much fun as we were really at the... What happened? What happened? What happened? The picture went off. Oh, for heaven's sake. How do you like that? We'll miss the opening of the game. Don, you try to fix the television set. Okay. Now, I'll get it on the radio. Let's see what station it's on here. No, no, don't leave me, Rodney Quagmire. <laughs> Rodney Quagmire? <laughs> Try it, Jack. Maybe the station is back here. Go ahead, Leo. Albert Bruce, Robert Bond. You sound like a boy Alex, player. Henry, Helen, Betty, Toulouse. Toulouse? <laughs> Must be a pinch hitter. <laughs> hey, Jack, we're missing the game. I'm trying. I'm trying to get it. Maybe I'll dance again. Why can't I get the game here? Our sponsor is happy to bring you this game. And now back to your World Series announcement. Well, that was an exciting game. <laughs> That's it. I've got it. And here we go into the top of the pitch. Now coming up to bat for the Dodgers is Roy Campanella. As you know, Allie Reynolds is pitching for the Yankees. Here's the wind-up. The pitch. Ball one. See, I'm glad we got the game. Reynolds winds up again. Here comes the pitch. The ball two. See, I bet he walks them. You know? Reynolds winds up again. There's the pitch. I 
philosophy that one on television. Don, hurry and fix the set. I'm working on it. Here's the next pitch. with this set now? Milton Harrell. Oh, for heaven's sake. And our eldest son who ran away from home, Rodney Quagmire Jr. Oh. I wonder what became of him. Why can't I get this game? Here? Yes, folks, Hodges is now on first base as a result of a walk. See, Hodges walked. And the count on Pee Wee Reese is three balls, no strikes. Here comes the next pitch. Ball four. Hodges advances to second. And as Reese goes down to first, he is saying to Hodges, I'm walking to you. What's wrong with this radio? I want to listen to the game. All I can get is a crummy singer and some woman with 48 children. Oh, we're here in a thrilling game of the World Series. If this is your announcer, Rodney Quagmire Jr. <laughs> I'd just like to say hello to my tired old mother. See, if Mrs. Mac Quagmire ever goes to this your life, it'll be an hour show. And now Duke Snyder is at the plate. Here comes the pitch. Snyder hits the first pitch and it's going, going over the fence on the west side of the field. It's going, going, still going, going, going. Well, it looks like Snyder is bringing Major League Baseball to Los Angeles all by himself. God, he must really have hit that one. Jack, Jack, I've got the television set fixed. Good. Come on, Leo, let's sit here. Okay, Jack. Let me get that set down. I, I know what channel it's on. <laughs> no, not on television, too. Look over your shoulder. I'll try another channel. Yeah. Gee, and it's a nice fair picture, too. Yeah. Oh, look, the Yankees are at bat. Brooklyn must have been put out. Well, that makes the count two and two on Rizzuto. You mean they have that same crazy announcer on television, too? <laughs> Quiet, Jack. I want to watch him pitch the Rizzuto. Okay, Leo. Here we go. Campanella's behind the plate again. Preacher Rowe is on the mound. And here comes Whitey Lockman. Whitey Lockman? He's with the Giants. Peanut, peanut, catch a hot dog. <laughs> that boy, Whitey. Sell him, sell him. <laughs> what is this, anyway? Rizzuto knows it back. Here comes the pitch. And Rizzuto lines one in the center field. He's rounding first. He's trying to stretch it to a double. There he goes. Here comes the relay. Rizzuto slides and he's out. Out? Yes, out. Well, you bummy was safe by a mile. <laughs> I said he was out Leo. Go on, you haven't called one right all day. Oh, yeah. Leo. Tell me my business. You couldn't see that play if you were wearing Jack Benny's glasses. Leo, leave me out of it. <laughs> and so do you. Why, if I was Leo. in New York, I'd punch you right in the nose. That does it. I'm throwing you out of the game. What? Go hard, make it out. Out, out. Oh, yeah, well, I'll fix you. Leo, put down that chair. Leo, don't smash my television. Leo. <laughs> Leo. I've never been so insulted in my life. I'm going home. Once, oh, why can't I hear the World Series game? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in a minute to tell you about my television show that goes on tonight at 7 p.m. over the CBS television network. But first, a word from America's foremost authority on etiquette, Miss Amy Vanderbilt. Some of my friends tell me that in my new book on etiquette, I was a little hard on smoking. Actually, I was hard on smokers, at least some smokers. I dislike thoughtless smokers. You know, the man next to you at the dinner table who holds his cigarette so that the smoke drifts into your eyes. I like considerate smokers. For instance, I like to know that my husband is considerate enough to carry my brand of cigarette. 
lucky strike. In smoking, as in etiquette, it is, after all, all a matter of taste. I want a cigarette that tastes better to me than any other. That's lucky strike. Friends, Amy Vanderbilt is right. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And for two very good reasons. One, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Two, Lucky's are made better to taste better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. So take a tip from me and be happy. Go Lucky, because Lucky's taste better. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Leo DeRocha for not winning the pennant so he could be on my show tonight. <laughs> and, uh, incidentally, at 7 p.m., I'll be doing my TV show over the CBS television network. Say, Leo, why don't you come over with me and watch my television show? Leo. Leo, where are you? I'm walking behind you. <laughs> Good night, folks. See you at 7. show tonight was written by Milt Josephsberg, John Tackerberry, Hal Goldman, Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Mark. Be sure to hear The American Way with Forrest Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>